Hi everyone, in this video we're going to reduce the drag of a Cessna aircraft just using a public 3D model just to show you what it's like using a technique called design advice. So what happens is that after you run a normal CFD simulation, this technique will run a second simulation called the adjoint simulation, which will tell you where to move the surface outward or inward depending on the goal that you have. In this case the goal is drag reduction, so let's see what design advice is telling us. So this is a public 3D model, as mentioned, it's quite low resolution, so you'll see some artifacts when we start running through the simulations and the results. So nevertheless, the problem areas typically in terms of drag are the landing gear. Uh, so this one has a permanent one, so it can't be retracted, which means that the support elements and the cowlings uh, across the wheels and so on, they're all generating drag. So we'll focus mainly on those and then also see what it tells us in terms of the wing profile, which you don't want to change, but just out of curiosity. So if you look at the design advice, there are a number of things that can be pointed out. So if you look at the landing gear, it's covered by this cowling, which is actually um, fairly boxy. So what is happening is that you have a high pressure buildup uh, at the front of these elements, and then the air needs to curve around, and there's a 90 degree angle between this front face of the cowling and the side face. So that speed up creates a drop in pressure, and that's not really uh, desirable for aerodynamics. So what the design advice is telling us is, please, uh, the red here, which is move the surface outward along the normal, which means pull it outward, so that means forward, and the edges push, push them inward. So that means if you go to a uh, bottom view, let's say, that would mean instead of this boxy profile, it wants us to push this in, so curve inward like this, and then push this one outward like this, so you get a much more rounded shape actually on your um, covering for the wheel. And of course, it, it also wants to change the wheel itself, which is interesting. Uh, it wants to give it a more like an oval shape uh, to, to point into the wind a bit more or, or slice through the wind. Uh, that's not going to happen, the wheels need to be round, but still quite interesting. Then we have uh, the rear of this cover. So what happens is that you leave behind a wake behind this cover. And again, instead of having this chopped off shape, um, from an aerodynamics perspective, you want this to actually curve inward already uh, to start getting that drop shape, which is so favorable in terms of aerodynamics. So that is why both the edges, left and right here, are marked as blue um, to squeeze this shape. And the red here means extend this one to create more like of a pointy shape, uh, pointy shape to fill that wake um, behind the vehicle. Or the aircraft. So over here we have the next element, we have a drag which is generated by the support element connecting the, the wheel to the aircraft. So the advice here is to push this surface of the aircraft downward which creates kind of a gurney or a spoiler or a deflector to shield this part from generating too much drag, which is quite interesting actually. Um, then if we move on, we have these support elements which hold the wing into place. Basically what the design advice is telling us is, well, everything is blue, just squeeze it and get rid of them. <laughs> we, we do understand that it's not possible from a structural perspective, but from a purely aero perspective this is very logical. Then what we see here is that we have flow separation. This is like a small footrest to get into the plane, I believe. And the footrest is horizontal, which makes sense if you want to step on it, but the local airflow pattern is actually downward, uh, which means the air is hitting the top, um, and this is why you have flow separation pointing downward here. So the design advice is telling us, well, in that case, uh, this um, pointy, uh, so this area should be pointed downward. Sorry, it's the opposite. Um, so it wants us uh, to change the angle of attack downward here of this part, uh, probably to be more in line with the landing gear um, of, this, uh, of this setup. And actually to shield its own support element probably so that this one doesn't get the pressure buildup that we see here. Then same thing uh, as we saw on the front landing gear, uh, slightly different because there's a different uh, uh, flow pattern going on here. Um, also you have this extra element here on the side. Uh, so this one is sticking out, so again it's getting some pressure. So what the design advice is telling us is, well, uh, this one, um, as the air is coming in this way, uh, please connect these parts here um, so that you fill up um, this area so that this one becomes connected to this one tangentially and the same at the rear. So it wants us to create a nice tangential curve connecting all three here instead of having this element sticking out there. 
Other areas, um, you have a stagnation area between the nose cowling and the front windscreen. So it wants us to push this up and create a more uh, smooth transition between the two. In terms of the wing, we're not going to do this, but to reduce the drag, uh, it wants us to push this leading edge down, which would uh, change the lifting properties of the wing. Uh, less drag, but also less lift, so that's not something we want to do. Uh, if you want to re uh, reduce the drag, especially induced drag of the wing, um, you don't want to shoot the air downward, which is generating lift. You just want to lift that trailing edge a bit uh, to drop some of the lift uh, in favor of lower drag. We're not going to do that. Um, we do want that lift, but it's normal uh, to see it explain this. Um, this pattern is actually the result of a low resolution of the original model. Um, if you would do it on a smooth model, you would see a smooth map there. Um, over here, what we see is that, of course, we need cabin space for passengers and so on, but the air tries to curve around the passenger space and then fill this wake behind the aircraft. So it's trying to tell us, uh, please push this one inward. Um, over here to the right so that the air can actually curve around and fill the wake here behind. Um, what we also have here is that uh, there's a sharp uh, corner between this uh, surface, the rear window and the tail. Uh, so again, design advice is telling us, yeah, make this more smooth by lifting this area. Again, we know that structurally or cost-wise, it's not beneficial to have all of these complex parts, but that's what it's recommended to us. Um, over here, this is just because this is a simple model. Um, in reality, this would be a nicely curved leading edge of the tail. In this case, it's a flat face, so it's again saying uh, smoothen this edge and bring forward the middle part so that in top view um, you have a smoother, actually, a smoother assembly here uh, of the entire uh, tail. So that's in a nutshell the design advice recommendations that we get on a very simple public 3D model of a Cessna. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit the like button and drop your comments or get in touch with us if you just want to discuss your own projects. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.